The best advice I can give to newer traders or traders who've been doing it for a while but haven't met the level of consistency that they're looking for in their trading, okay, is to simplify. Simplify, 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 simplify. Man, when I was starting out, there was a million things going through my head and I so wanted to latch into a vein of success. I wanted that for my self-esteem. I wanted to be validated. I knew I could do the work, right? I was doing the work. And I've mentioned many times before on the show, I come from a family that has a very strong work ethic, so my sister and I have an enormous amount of grit. So that wasn't the hard part. Working hard came easy to us. We didn't have a, chance, have a choice. It was work hard or get my father's size 10 shoe somewhere near my back pocket area. Anyway, I'm Michael Martin. I'm a Los Angeles-based futures options and stock trader. Um, happy to be here to help you all with stuff. I'm just fighting the tail end of a cold here. Apologize for my voice, but nothing stops me. I'm unstoppable, just like you, mofos. You have to understand that preparation, right? This is kind of key for life, right? Trading is a microcosm of, you know, life. Your emotional models that you're running in your life, you will overlay in the market. And then how hard you want to work towards getting a goal will be probably a mirror image of what you've done in other parts of your life. And so if you're one of these infatuation junkies, you'll probably be enamored with everything. Everything, every big mover is going to look good, but the follow through is going to be bad, right? And that's what happens in those types of relationships. It's all super hot and heavy. Sex is kind of good and then it fades. Why? Because really that wasn't the goal. The goal is not to have a lasting relationship. It was to have all the heat, right? Been there, done that. It's okay. Doesn't mean either one of you are bad. But if you want to trade, you have to understand it's a marathon. And I'm going to say this will probably piss off a whole bunch of people, but prove me wrong. Lacking a strategy, volatility does not equal opportunity. So if you're watching SMCI, you know, and, and, and whatever the darlings of the day, Cardano and Bitcoin and NVIDIA, all those things could move and double in a month for all I know. You see what I'm saying? Wheat could, uh, soybeans could trade down to nine. SMCI could make it to, you know, who knows, $1,500 by opening day in baseball season. Your guess is as good as mine. But, but if you don't have a strategy that you can follow day after day after day, it's as if those names don't even really exist. You're just being a voyeur, really, with a lot of expensive technology kind of looking in at other people, acting things out. And so what I had to do was to disqualify, right? That was, the, that was the, the missing link. It's like there wasn't so much opportunity because a lot of the trades and the setups in those days didn't really resonate with me. Knowing the names because they were all blue chip style stuff made it worse because then I brought bias to the table, right? So then you start thinking like, oh, of course, this company makes blade servers and this and that. And you're like, what are you, Peter Lynch now? What are you, a CFA? You don't know shit about the fundamentals. Even the CFAs who I teach are looking at reading at, you know, income statements and balance sheets. Good for them. What can they bring, break it down to? Best practices? Eventually, they still have to make a judgment call. Like, is the company performing on all eight cylinders, right? And so you kind of figure, like, are you a fundamentalist or are you going to be, you know, a chart reader? And if you're a chart reader... You really want to break it down to one thing, one pattern, and execute that for a long time. How long? I don't know, a year? Probably not what you want to hear. Because in two or three months, it doesn't really mean a lot. It feels good. I got you. I got you. And it felt good to me. Certainly was better than losing for three months. That's for damn sure. But there's just not enough of, of a sample space to know that you're just not lucky right? And in, in trading, you need to know that you have some kind of skill. What's your alpha? What is it that you bring to the table that outperforms buy and hold? Because there's really nothing wrong with doing like Warren Buffett says, chucking your money into a zero cost S&P 500 fund and then going out and find something that you're really good at. Trading's not the end all. But what you don't want to do is piss away a lot of time jumping from one lily pad to the other trying to figure out where your frog wants to sit. Because ultimately, it's not going to work. You have to act consistently with one ideology, right? I talk about religion and politics. 
to the extent that typically you want to be, you, you have to be locked into whatever that ideology might be. You can't jump from religion from day to day to day. The fancy word is apostasy. You can't jump around from one belief system to the other, right? And if you're newer trying to, you know, work on 10 different strategies at the same time, I think it's very difficult to lock into one and to not get head faked. That just creates more mental chaos. Now, admittedly, there's probably a handful of people out there who just have natural ability they can do it, but it's very, very few. This came up in the discussion about some of these funding accounts. You know, I'm, I'm pretty well aware because those people reach out to me. They want advertised. They want to be on the show. I tell them, no, thank you. I don't really have guests. And to be honest, since it's my show, the guests that I have are friends of mine. Why else would I bring a stranger in the house to hijack my audience? You want to get clients? Get your own fucking channel. Don't bother me. So that's why Brian and, and Chicago Sean McLaughlin come on. And maybe a few other people because we're buddies. I've known them for 20 years. And they're reliable. I'm very well aware of how the funding accounts work. And you can put 20 of them together and enter orders on one. And they will replicate across the whole thing. And that's one benefit for sure, if you know what you're doing. But that's not the argument that I'm making. A newer person has no business doing that, no, no different than a newer trader trying to trade on margin too soon when he or she or they can't make money trading cash. Why the hell do you, you know, oh, but Mike, I'm a call, that's long, I know, you're long a call option. Piss away, you know, 800 bucks a month to have the accounts. It's no, it's nothing, it's better to lose that than to lose real cash, right? So now, you know, it's again, it's like buying a call option, I get it. And that does make sense. But I would stick to just one account and one strategy, spend your $40 and get your 90% off bullshit and, and, you know, make it work that way. And then, if, and then if you get good, then you could scale. But we're really talking about, that's a straw man argument. I think it was Viking or somebody wrote something in, which really had nothing to do with the, the, the topic. So I just deleted it. No hard feelings, but let's stick to the issues here. What you're going to see when you look at charts... Okay, a lot of it's noise from day to day to day. A mistake that you can make is to downtime. If you can't see it on the dailies, you have to make up your mind that you're probably not going to see it intraday. You don't care about intraday. If there's no trend or any significant move that's starting at the higher time frames, the lower time frame data is much more random, so you should disqualify it. In fact, that's a great word. Your job is to disqualify 95% of what you see to create a list of the other 5% where you might have 1% of those actually becoming trades. That requires an enormous amount of work. It doesn't require looking at E-minis or MNQs and changing the time frame to find divergences. It's a waste of time. There's no money in it. When there's other good trades that might be right underneath your nose if you were just open to looking at them. So you have to create a watch list, right? And then scour the news. Like, I don't even know how you screen anymore. You can go to the 52-week high list. Because in order for something to make, you know, 100%, it has to have been up 30 40% beforehand, right? So it doesn't mean the move is over. But ultimately, simplifying things is going to save you a lot of mental energy as well, which means when you finally hit your wit's end, you're not going to go on tilt and blow yourself up because you haven't pissed away a lot of time doing, doing things that haven't come to fruition or doing things that cause you to take action to get you the results that you're not getting, right? That's what I mean by fruition. Fruition probably means making money with some type of consistency. The other thing you need to understand is that it's not a game of accuracy, right? And you can let go the idea of needing to be right seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times out of 10. You can make a lot of money with three or four names in your portfolio. There's countless traders who have done it. Some of them compete, some of them don't compete. I don't really care for that. Doesn't bring the best out of me. I like to just compete with myself. Might be different for you. Ultimately, if you find a couple of names that you can put in your portfolio, they don't sound all that sexy, but if they're growing and they're moving, put them in your account and leave them, let them go. Don't sit there and keep watching like you plant the seeds. You don't have to go back and look at them the next day. Right, Trade small enough so that you can keep the good risks in your portfolio, right? And then if they keep moving up, you can consider adding more 
and then you can consider moving or adjusting your protective stop. The third thing is I wouldn't look and worry about what happens on any one particular trade. There's a saying in the pro circles of trading, and that is you trade your equity curve. Now, for the new person, you're like, what the hell does that even mean? Because <laughs> it took me 10 years to figure it out, too. I went to an Ivy League school. Trading your equity curve means look at the slope of, the, of your balance. Is it going up, sideways, or down? And typically, if you start losing money, you're trying to trade more conservatively, risk less money on a per-trade basis so that you can kind of decrease the impact of the magnitude and the duration of the drawdown, which is a pullback from any particular peak, right? Then if you're trading really, really well and you notice that your equity is going parabolic, there's a few things that you can study. Are your positions really, really big? Are you Were you in the right place at the right time? You know what I'm saying? Or is it just how you have skill? It could be a combination of all of that stuff. But that's why I stay emotionally grounded is because I don't really care about the outcome of any one particular trade. I talked with Brian Shannon. We'll talk about, I had a lot of recap I can go over about that show in another episode. But, you know, I talked about, you know, getting two call strikes on me basically before finally getting the base hit. I had had some call options that I had made some money on, nothing really big. And then I had like the 55 calls coming into the week before earnings, which expired. Um, and I didn't make any money on that. And so it's like I'm not aggravated because that was what I was willing to risk on a per trade basis. I'm not really looking to say, okay, I put 100K into call options and I lost a part of it or I lost all, all of it, I know where my risk is. I know what I'm willing to lose in order to be in the winning trade. The best thing I can do is to stick to my discipline, right? Point number four is just stick to what you know how to do and you're powerless over the results. I can control the position size, I can control my entry, and I can control my protective stop. Where the thing goes once I'm in the trade is a whole other ball of wax. Some of you overthink things at the worst possible time. And that's typically when you start making money, you start to freak out. It's like being naked in bed with somebody for the first time, right? You know, just take it easy. Enjoy the process. It's not necessarily the outcome because what you're going to learn through that whole process is going to help, is the, is the experiential part of trading. As I've said before, and I'm just coming from a trading coach or a guy who consults to it anyway, the best teacher that you're going to get is you actually doing it. Of course, you got to make sense of your actions and this and that, and that's kind of where I come in. But at the end of the day, you know, it's really between you and your higher power. For me, if I start making money on a trade, I'm like, okay, it's the appetizer. I'm just getting started. Now I got to figure how can I add more if the market lets me. Sometimes they go parabolic right, right away very quickly, and it's hard to get more on. But then you have to live with that. But I think... In the biggest takeaway is to just keep things super, super simple and enjoy the ride. This is going to take you probably years to figure this out to get to be where you want to be. And you have to have that level of patience. If you come into this thing either with your own cash or trying to make it with a funded account and think that you're going to be pulling down thousands and thousands of dollars inside of six months, hey man, it's a good goal. But I, I don't think it's terribly practical. And I'm not a dream killer. I just know how hard it is. And if the more practical you can be when you come sit down to, the, to your trading desk and understand that the learning process in and of itself is an arduous aspect because of the mental drain on you. Like you don't know, even when you make money, you don't know if you're good or if you're, or if you're lucky. And that's hard, right? It's hard. It sucked for me too. I know. It sucks. You know, there's really nothing you can do about it. There's no one there to pat you on the back. You can feel good about it. You can take a screen grab and send it through X or whatever, Snapchat or whatever, and that's good. It's kind of young, immature, but if that makes you feel good, then knock yourself out. You have to celebrate it, I guess, along the way. But the idea is, like, can you do that day after day after day after day, right, and take solace and get the emotional reward in, in doing that all the time? and not necessarily feeling bad when you lose and feeling good when you make. It's all the same thing. I really feel the same way. It's like, okay, I did what I know how to do every day. That's how I win the day. You see, I don't, I don't worry about the outcome of any one particular trade, so there is zero probability of me ever going on tilt. Is it aggravating once in a while? Sure. Is it aggravating to 
have puts on NVIDIA that expired the Friday before they had that big sell-off before the earnings announcement. Hey, man, bad timing. That's the way it goes. I could have went, I could have gone out and, bu and bought longer-dated puts, and I didn't, so that's on me. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. So I can bitch and bellyache about it, or I just come back and buy the at-the-money calls on the day that they announced earnings, and you know, which is what I did. Um, so, you know, you take it all in stride, right? It's really about a marathon. It's not like there's no journey. There's no destination. There is just a, a unique circumstances and set of behaviors that you want to repeat. That's the destination. It's all in your mindset, right? Everything else is kind of like self-imposed or things that you think are important that I can assure you aren't. Because it's not about making a certain amount of money. It's not about trading a certain asset class or having a certain holding period. That's all. Like, no one really cares. It's like some people have blue eyes and freckled face and red hair. There's other people who are, you know, dark complexion. It, it's just the uniqueness of everything. It doesn't matter. One's not better than the other. There's only really one that's best for you. Another thing that's very, very frustrating is that people ask me all the time, Mike, what's the best way to take, act, handle your winners? And I don't have enough information really to answer that question. If you've been around long enough, everybody knows that's probably the hardest trade on planet Earth, right? Is when do you take your winners? So, you know, again, I'll, I'll probably have more about that later this week. Too much to talk about here. But if, you, if you're starting out and you're frustrated, that's a good thing. That means you care. But you just have to also understand that it's going to take a while. The key is persistence and determination, right? If it was just about skill, everybody would be probably making money, right? So there's a lot more that goes into it. It's stick to -itiveness. It's can you keep a good attitude when you don't know shit and you feel like an idiot, but you know you have to take attempts anyway. Just remember, folks, losing money says nothing about you as a human being at all. Remember Jerry Maguire? It says no it's just money. It's just money. It doesn't mean anything. Don't put any importance on the money. You're speculating. What do you think's going to happen? So let that go. It's not like you're going to take this money and, and, you know, take your winnings and go buy a house with it or something like that. Your goal is to, is to follow one set of rules over and over and over again. And in the future, if you grow your, your capital base, sure, you can go diversify. But in the very beginning, it's not like you're missing out on anything because you wouldn't take that money and go consume with it anyway. It's an asset, so keep it in the asset column. If you like this, this video, there's more here.